this video we're going to be looking at price discrimination. Price discrimination is where for the same product, which costs the same amount of money to make, different consumers are charged different prices. Now there are three types of price discrimination, first degree, second degree and third degree. First degree price discrimination occurs when you firms charge maximum price that each consumer is willing to pay, so they capture all of the consumer surplus. Now a good example of this might be in a market stall. If someone's selling a pen, each time a consumer comes to buy the pen, the firm will charge um, the market um, stall will charge the maximum each consumer is willing to pay, i.e. capturing the consumer surplus. Second degree price discrimination is price discrimination against the amount of products you buy. So if I, uh, so if you come into a shop only willing to buy one pen, but there's an offer, buy two pens and get one free, you might be willing to pay uh, um, double the amount you originally thought in order to get those three pens. Or if I go to a news agent, I might buy a Kit Kat bar for 60p. When I go into Sainsbury's, it might be three for a pound. So you're more likely to buy that because you feel like you're getting a profit, and actually you don't need the consumers, but the firms are just getting extra money. Third degree price discrimination. The reason why there are two stars next to it is the most important form of price discrimination. This is when consumers are grouped and the different groups of consumers are charged different prices. So in Topshop, if you're a student, you get 10% off the original price, you get a cheaper price, and if you're not a student, you have to pay the whole price. So I talked to you about the three types of price discrimination, now we're going to go into the conditions. Now there are four conditions you have to satisfy in order to take place, in order for price discrimination to take place. The first is the firm must have a certain amount of market power because if you don't have market power, then a firm might simply go to, uh, then a consumer might simply go to a different shop. Like if I um, start my own clothes business and I start discriminating against um, students and non-students, um, the people who are not students might say, why should I pay all this money to come to a shop which I've never heard of? I'd rather go to a different shop and get it uh, for a cheaper price. So that might, that's why you need market power. The second is that you need to be able to separate markets. You need to be able to see that if I have a shoe shop, the people who are coming to my shoe shop are kids, then I have adults, then I have the elderly, and then I have students. So I've just differentiated between four markets in my business. You need to be able to do that. And the third is, these four markets need to be able to have different price elasticities of demand. Because if they don't have price elasticities of demand which are different, you can't charge different prices. And as we saw in Unit 1, if you have an elastic demand, then you want to charge a lower price. And if you have an inelastic demand, you want to charge a higher price. That's how the non-students and student things work. And lastly, you need to be able to prevent the resale of the product. Now this is because other, the people who are, you are charging a higher price might say, why should I come to you when the product's being resold for a cheaper price? I'd rather just go there. Now those are the four conditions. Now suppose I'm View Cinema. And View Cinema can fulfill this. They do have differentiated between ages. So they have kids, they have teens, they have students, they have adults, they have elderly. They have all this different range of markets. So they're differentiated. The adult market is going to be inelastic because adults earn money and they're able to pay for the price. Students have an elastic market because if the price goes up by 2%, they're likely to go somewhere else and buy it because the demand is likely to go down because students can't afford it. That's why they have an elastic demand. And this is view Sinmar's cost curve. So we have the marginal cost, marginal revenue, average, co uh, average revenue, and average cost. So now they are a profit maximizing firm. They work at marginal revenue equals marginal cost, this point right here. So this is their quantity. And the price would be they go up to demand and that's their price. Now the minimum cost that they, sh they need to satisfy is at this level, so this is the min cost. This gives them a super normal profit of this much. I've shaded it in blue. That's a super normal profit. Now the thing is, if when they differentiate the market, this is without differentiating the market, they already have this much profit. Now by differentiating the market, let's see how much extra profit they gain. So if we look at the minimum cost here, and we just draw 
and I'm going through it. So these are the costs. So firstly, let's start with the inelastic, the adult market. So marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Here, yeah, go up to demand. That's the price. That's where the costs are met. That's the output, and that is the revenue from that. Same thing here, marginal revenue equals marginal cost is the quantity to go up to price, uh, demand to get price, and that's the price, uh, that's the super long profit. Now the profit, super long profit from here, and the super long profit from here is greater than the super long profit received from there. And this output here, and this output here, should give you this output here because that is how much they're ready to produce anyway. Now, I did write, I want to end with the evaluation, but the evaluation of price discrimination is what I've been talking about throughout the whole video. That the firms will get increased revenue, increased profit, profit. they can turn consumer surplus into producer surplus, they can encourage um, shareholders to invest in them because of the increased profit. And also it might be good for consumers because if they're taking this profit and reinvesting into research and development, then they may be encouraging new products to come out which might be good for consumers. However, for firms it's hard to meet the criteria. For example, if we look at the iPod in the USA, they charge cheaper um, than how much they charge in the UK. But they can't prevent the resale because people from the UK are still purchase in dollars from people in uh, from firms in the USA. So this is price discrimination. I hope this video helps.